you have so many shows coming up and you're going to be on the road like in your full element and i'm glad that you're going to be on the road again because so i feel that's where you thrive i didn't have purpose i like i didn't have purpose like during like the past couple of years yeah and yeah. i and i'm realizing that just now mm -hmm. you know i went out on the road and it was suddenly like i didn't realize how depressed i was yeah i don't have any memory of anything during the pandemic yeah it's gone like i don't know what because happened nothing was happening i don't know what happened in pop culture i don't mm -hmm. know what happened i was watching a little baby documentary last night and uh it was all about like what you know he did in 2019 20 mm -hmm. 21 you know, I, I stay up with music, with hip-hop especially. I love hip-hop. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't remember any of this shit. Yeah. I just remember very, very specific, like, highlight moments. And most of them are creation of music. Mm -hmm. And then nothing again until I got on the stage. And now this summer, ooh, I feel alive again. Yeah. You're, you know? Yeah, you're in your element. And, like, it's, it's so easy to live in this world and struggle on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Like... Every single day I talk about mental health on my show mm -hmm. and I give out the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline because like I I know like I yeah, I've struggled in the past. Yeah. Which like, we'll we'll leave a link for that in this video. Yes, yes, yeah. well absolutely. And the number is 988 now, which is so beneficial. Yeah. It's like a three digit number that you can remember and like yeah. they have uh if you are struggling with PTSD and all that stuff, you can call and tell them that and they'll redirect you to the proper place where you should be talking to and it's available 24 hours a day. So, yeah. I mean, I always like to give that out, but also to let people know that they should never feel embarrassed about their mental That's health. That's it, right there. They should never feel embarrassed for struggling. Because it's like because, all of us at this point. Uh, it, literally, <laughs> like, if you do not struggle with yeah. your mental health, you're, lying. The, the, you're so lying. lying. Like, it's, yeah. it's such, it's so easy for us to get in touch with our feelings now and realize that we are struggling whereas mm -hmm. for you and me when we were kids it wasn't okay to talk it, about it it wasn't okay to talk about it but also they didn't know about it like mm. looking back at my childhood i'm like holy shit i struggled with anxiety so bad my mm -hmm. mom would be like calm down you're fine it, yeah. will, it will pass and right. she didn't even know it was anxiety because like it was not being talked it was about dismissed yeah 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 so it's like to be able to talk about it now and feel able and comfortable to talk about our mental mm -hmm. health to each other is a great thing because people need to like stop feeling embarrassed for whatever reason and i know it can be hard to like reach out to those closest to you like your family members mm -hmm. your mom and dad and mm -hmm. like they're like hey actually i'm depressed as fuck yeah. and i'm having a hard time and they're kind of blindsided mm. but who cares if they're blindsided you're struggling yeah. like talk to someone if you need to do you but... think it's like more people are struggling now than ever too mm -hmm. Social media, I feel like right? It's social media, right? Social media and just the fact that we're more aware of it. Mm. Like, in in high school, I was just like, oh, I'm a little emo kid. Mm -hmm. Like, no, man. Like, I had issues. Like, I just didn't realize them. Yeah. And I'm sure you can say the same. Like, you just said you don't remember anything from the whole pandemic. And right. as soon as you get back into your element and you said, like, you felt like you didn't have purpose. Like, right, yeah. It's scary. I'm sure everyone's felt like that before, though. But... Tell me a little bit more of how you got yourself out of it. I know obviously hitting the stage again and being able to play shows was part of it. It's it's really all of it. I wish I, I wish that there was, was like I it? feel like a, a weak person because I'm so reliant on that. And I don't think it's like I need um fanfare or I need um to be praised or anything like that. I just think that left to my own device, if I'm not doing something productive, like I said, like I remember writing Mm -hmm. music i remember recording music i remember performing music but nothing else i'm like what what, what would i do yeah but really probably nothing nothing, like, I, I nothing know, remarkable I yeah like i know i wasn't doing i was just working mm -hmm. like i wasn't like i can't tell you anything cool that yeah. that i that i did besides work and it's like but like we also said earlier we don't want to call it work because it's what we love doing it's like what we what we set out to do with our lives that's like, another thing i thought like um it was work until it's gone mm -hmm. like, yeah no nope. <laughs> and, nope. and you just called yourself like you feel weak you mm. absolutely shouldn't feel weak because you chose this path you chose like wanting to be a musician and you're incredible at it and you're able to give so many people this music yeah, and but make is that, them feel is that better, like all i know? am 
you know? But, it's that's, like a, it, it, but is that all? Like, you're saying, is that all? Like, mm-hmm. that is such I don't want to be whiny. Big... I don't want to come across as, like, whiny, No, no, but... you're not. But it's, like, y- you also need to realize, like, how helpful you are to people without even knowing it and how many people you influence. And you being a musician and being able to put out your own material that you worked on, that you wrote, like, this is what you are doing and what yeah. you chose to do and what you want to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, you should never call yourself weak for... Yeah, no, it's, for... it's a blessing, and, it, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm super grateful and super thankful to have the the, the opportunity yeah. to be an artist for a living. But I don't, I don't know that I'd say I chose it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, the, I didn't chase the game, the game chose me. But, yeah. like, f- you know, yeah. I feel like I'm learning that I, I just, I don't know what else I am or what else I would do. Maybe I'll figure that out, you know? Like, I'm still going through it. I'm still, like, yeah. learning about myself every day, but. For sure, and I mean. You're 36, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like the older we get, the more hard on ourselves we are, right? Like, we're like, well, oh, I'm I'm turning 32 or I'm turning 37 and I haven't done this and I haven't done that. But we have to look at what we have done Mm. and realize that we've accomplished so much that we already set out to do. Did you know what you wanted to do when you were a kid? Not when I was a kid. I knew I loved music so much, but because I couldn't play any instruments, I was like, I can't be a musician. Yeah. Like, I, I tried to play instruments. I don't have the attention span for it. And then I entered a contest to be a VJ. Mm. And I was like, wait, I love this. This is what I want to do. And yeah. then it took me 10 years to get, like, to be sitting in this chair. Yeah. It took me so fucking long to get where I am. And, like, the one thing I'll give kudos to myself for is I never gave up. And I worked so many jobs where I wasn't making money and yeah. I wasn't getting paid. And, I was so broke and like not eating sure, because yeah. I had no money. Like, like, by the way, for anybody listening, that's what it takes to become successful at anything. Mm-hmm. It's like full sacrifice. Do you feel fulfilled? Yeah, right now I do. Yeah. Right now, when when I'm here and I'm sitting with like a friend and an artist and I'm talking about what I love, mm. I feel so fulfilled. When I'm at the festivals mm. and I'm getting to watch all these bands and I'm like, this is my life, I'm fulfilled. Amazing. When I'm doing my shows from home, I might feel a little bit differently because, you know, like you get into a routine and you're doing it every day and you're like, oh, my God, like sometimes it's so hard to find motivation to just do it. Yeah. Right. But when I'm in here and I'm sitting across from you, it's so much more impactful for me. Like it's like just. I feel it hits different and it feels different and it feels good. Like we're both talking about what we want to do and we're talking about what we love so much and we're just able to bond over it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, it feels good. I'm envious. I don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel fulfilled right now? I don't feel fulfilled Even with the record out and stuff? I feel stoked. I'm so excited about the record. I'm so excited about my career. I'm so excited about everything that's happening. Mm Mm-hmm. There's something missing. What do you think it is? I don't know. I have so much, right? I have, like, a beautiful girlfriend, an awesome dog. I got places in Brooklyn and, and Los Angeles. I have fans around the world. Yeah. So what the fuck is wrong? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, there's something like what uh, the reason I asked you, did you know what you wanted to do when you were a kid? Mm-hmm. I still think like, what do I want to be when I grow up? Like, I just don't feel like, like this is it. Like I've made it or like, I, I don't feel like that. I feel like there's something like, like I, I was born to do more and I don't know yeah. what it is. You know what I mean? And so I guess like I, that might sound weird to somebody from the outside, but weird. like, you know, because like, Oh, you know, he's, he's got his thing going on. Yeah. It's not enough. But you don't feel like Mm-mm. it's it's your purpose. You don't well, feel like it's like it's my purpose, but like I think there's more. You think there's more to it? Yeah. I mean, I I don't think age can determine anything like that when it comes to like I, I think I will do so much more in my career yeah. and in my life in general. But yeah. where I'm at right now I'm happy happy with, you know, but like I'll never stop trying for more. Yeah. Right. So like I do feel fulfilled some days I don't, like I mm. like I said, but for you, like, it, it, it should never feel like a bad thing that you want more. And that's it, right? I got to stay, like, positive, not stress it. Like, just just, just kinda, let you know, it roll. Like yeah, keep let, doing what I'm doing. Yeah, keep doing It'll what you're doing. Out. And also, like, this sounds so cliche, but there's so many stories out there about, like, Oprah and Morgan Freeman and, mm. like, all these people. Like, Morgan Freeman didn't get his first, like, huge movie role until he was in his 50s. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, like... There's always time. It doesn't matter if you're fucking 70 years old yeah. or if you're 20 years old. Yeah. Like, I didn't think I was going to be where I am now. And now that I'm here, I'm always striving for more. So it's like the, the higher you get and 
you set out for a goal, you reach it, you set out for another goal. And it's like a yeah. ladder that you're constantly climbing, right? Yeah. So I think you'll you'll get there. You just have to have to find it. And I didn't like I'm sorry, this is turning like a therapy session, but thanks. No, <laughs> like, like, like I'm I'm glad we're talking about this because mm. I I highly... think it's important that people know. I like again, yeah. we don't I don't do interviews very often and I I would rather just be like fucking honest. Mm. With, I'm not trying to be a bum out, but no, I, I, I want people it, out there to like hear me and, and understand that like if they, because they probably feel like. Like I, shit sometimes. There's probably people that think like, oh, some people haven't figured it out. They have it all figured out and shit. I'm like, I don't know. People well, think I do and I don't. I don't have oh, it figured yeah. out. Like people are always assuming when we're in this industry that we're so taken care of. And the truth of it all is. We struggle just like everyone else. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah, we have these amazing jobs and we're on stage, but like, you're not always making money. Mm-hmm. You're not always like, there are times where you're running freaking dry and living off of your savings if you have a yeah. savings account, right? Yeah. And people just assume because we do what we do, like, oh, we're set for life. We're good. Like, we're yeah. not struggling. That's not the truth at all. Yeah. So this, I hope that this interview helps people realize that we're all the same Mm -hmm. we're all struggling we're all dealing with jobs and security and searching for more like but that's what we wanted to do during this interview is make people realize that it's a good struggle though right like life is fun i guess you know i kind of look at it sometimes like uh like a giant video game yeah it's bound to end at some point Mm -hmm. but in the meantime and I love it so much, by the way. I'm not saying like, oh, it's going to end. Like, I'm not saying like that. But it's bound to end at some point. So while I'm here, how many points can I get? You know what I mean? Like, what can I make my high score? Interesting. That's how I look at things sometimes. Well, I think, I know, obviously, we we both struggle. And a lot of people watching this are probably struggling. So what would you say to the people watching? Rock fans are definitely struggling. Y'all are out there. Uh, Yeah, yeah, at least we have each other, right? I love the rock community. Oh, man, I got to be honest. I like, and this is no secret, um, let's talk about it. You know, a lot of people had issue with the fact that on my last album, I was rapping and I was working with Mm -hmm. Young Thug and and, uh, trying out different things. And I guess there was like a, a moment of time where I felt... Um, like I needed to step away from the rock community for a second, just to kind of explore just musically as a musician, yeah. you want to try, you didn't want to limit yourself. No, to anything. and I never will. I mm-hmm. never will. I, you know, this album's a lot heavier. It's got a lot uh, more rock in it. But one thing that I realized is that, uh, as I, as I dabbled into other communities and shit like that, I love the rock community. <laughs> it's such a good family. People are so like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's unique. I don't know what other industry has the camaraderie. I'm sure they exist, but yeah. for me, like, I don't know. It's like we're all there for, for each other. Like, if you're at a festival and you have, like, you fall down or you, I don't know, got got hit by something, like, mm-hmm. someone's always there to help you, and you make so many friends at these festivals, too. It seems too. less competitive. Mm-hmm. If I need to borrow an amplifier, you know, someone's going to let me borrow it. Like, it just seems less competitive. Honestly, like, Cardi and Nikki and they're going at it, you know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. like this this thing yeah. like that. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> let's but, fucking work. let's work together. Yeah. yeah. Let's, you know? <laughs> Let, let's collab or do something something fun. Mm-hmm. I yeah, that's I think that's probably why I love rock so much too and why I wanted to like end up in the metal and rock community. Yeah. It's just it hits different and like we can talk to each other like this yeah. and like yeah. Like, I was so if, nervous, like for Pink Lullaby, I'm screaming in that song. Mm-hmm. I was so nervous to do it. I was like, oh I, I scream different. So, like, no, it's and I was like, what are people going to think about my, my screams? Like, am I, do I have enough fucking rock cred to do that? I was just nervous, you know what I mean? And, like, I got so many people that supporting, you know. Yeah. Like fucking Spencer from Under Oath. Yeah. Like, fucking nailed it, bro. And, it's like, coming so, from him, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. It's so good. It's, like, it's just, you're, I'm glad that you did it and didn't scratch it, you know? Mm. I'm glad that you went out of your comfort zone you tried some new things and now i want to do it more yeah it's like all i want to fucking exactly. do exactly right and now. I, i'm glad because i'm not that it's a bad thing but when these bands just stay the same for mm-hmm. years and years yeah sure the fans love that but we need something more like we we need to know like what type of person you are and if they're just doing the same thing over and over again you don't feel like you know them any more than you did with the last record right and 
for this. I feel like you having fun in the music videos and you just like doing all these crazy things. Like yeah. I'm getting to know you better because you're doing something different. And I like that. And I like when people push their boundaries and try something new. And like you said, you were nervous, but now you're like ready to go full force and oh, yeah. do it even more. Oh, yeah. I want to lean into it. Yeah. So I'm here for it. And uh, I'm still waiting on that Post Malone collaboration, you know, that you know? we've, uh, been talking about for what like eight years yeah it's on somebody's hard drive somewhere. yeah <laughs> <laughs> hayden's like yeah my song's on his hard drive somewhere out i wonder there. how many songs he just has on hard drives oh my god you know crazy crazy but I'm, I'm glad that you're here and i'm glad that we got to do this do you want to talk about anything anything else in particular yeah no i feel like we covered a lot of ground here i'm i'm really stoked that i got this opportunity to be with you and uh yeah you're, you're so sweet. I'm just like glad that we could actually come into the studio and do this too because we were originally going to do it over Zoom. I switched Zoom. my flight for this. Just like, so you guys know. I know. Like, and I'd I appreciate much rather do you. this. You're yes. like, some fucking Zoom. I'm zoomed out. I know. Like, I'm tired of the Zoom, the Zoom interviews. Like, this is so much more like in depth and just like makes you feel like a real person again. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm just so glad that you came in. Terrible Johnny. Johnny Stevens, highly suspect in the Sirius XM Los Angeles studios. Probably going to go to LAX and hop on a flight back to New York. You got it. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs>